Hi and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor and in this section of the course we're going to tackle the topic of the dot product. Okay, you've, you've probably used this in physics, we're going to definitely use it a lot in calculus and uh, we're going to talk about that here. So <clears throat> in the last section we talked about how to add vectors and subtract vectors and we said that you could multiply a vector by a scalar, by a number. Okay, we did that before. But I told you that multiplying two vectors together uh, is trickier than just you know, multiplying two numbers together. It's a little something more to it. You need to interpret what you're doing and know how to do it. You can't just multiply the components together and expect it to work out. There's two ways to multiply a vector and they, uh, the, which method you use really depends on what the physics of what you're trying to do, what, what it is, okay, and we'll talk about that. The first one's called the dot product, that's what we're going to talk about today. The next section is going to be the cross product and that's completely different application for different topics and we'll talk about that a little bit later, okay? So, the dot product, let me just write it down on the board, uh, what a dot product would look like, and then we'll talk about what it means, physically what it means, and how you would use it, and we'll solve some problems, okay? So, if you had a vector, A, the same vector we've always been talking about, and we said that that vector had a component A sub 1 in the x direction, and we said it had A sub 2 in the y direction, and we said it had A sub 3 in the z direction, i, j, k, x, y, z, and let's say, and that's a vector, and let's say we had another vector, b, that was b1 in the i direction, b2 in the j direction, and b3 in the k direction. Now these a1s, 2s, and 3s, b1s, 2s, and 3s, these are just numbers, just like the, all the other problems we've been doing in the last section. They're just numbers. I'm just generalizing it here for you, okay? Now if we wanted to define the dot product between A and B, which I haven't even told you what you would use it for yet. That's, that's sort of coming in a little bit. A dot with B, you literally put a dot there. That's what, you, uh, that's what you do to denote the dot product of two vectors. What it's going to be is the following. A sub 1 times B sub 1 plus A sub 2 times B sub 2 plus A sub 3 times B sub 3. So notice I don't have any i's, j's, or k's here. Okay, I've just got a number, which is a1 times b1, a number a2 times b2, a number a3 times b3. I add them all together, I'm getting a number back. Okay, I'm not getting a vector back. So the dot product always returns a number. I'm going to put in parentheses, not a vector. Okay. So there's your first question mark that should fly up. Why would you multiply two vectors together and never get a vector back? How can that possibly make any sense in the real world that we live in? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll talk a lot about it here in a minute, and I'm just going to save that and kind of let you percolate on that in the back of your head. We're going to cover a little more territory, and I'm going to come back full circle, and I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you why that's useful, and I'm also going to show you where this stuff comes from, because right now I just wrote it down on the board. I said, here's, here's what the dot product is. You could go ahead and figure it out, but now we're going we're gonna to tackle that in a little more glory a little bit later on, okay? <clears throat> so, what does A dotted with B <clears throat> really mean? And when I say really mean, I mean, what does it really mean graphically? What does it really mean uh, to have two vectors and dot them together like that, okay? Picture's worth a thousand words, so that's what I'm going to do here. <clears throat> Let's say that you have some vector with an, a length like this and we're going to call that the B vector. That's just vector B that we've been talking about, okay? And let's say A is some vector that points up like this in a different direction and a different length. And that's A vector, okay? Nothing new here. These vectors, because they're not pointing in the same direction, they have an angle between them. We call it theta, okay? So, I'm going to have to do a little talking here and then tie it all together. So if it, the next sentence or the next couple of sentences don't make sense, please just continue listening and I'll promise I'll pull it all back together for you, okay? When you have a vector dotted with another vector and you're drawing it graphically to figure out what, it, what you're really doing here, okay? What the dot product really is, is if I were to take this component here, if I were to take A, this vector A right here, and if I were to only look at the projection of A on to B, which would be this projection, the projection of A onto B, this quantity right here, which would be the, the how much of A actually falls in the B direction, what I'm going to call that is the component of A uh, along B. Okay, component of A along B. Okay, 
this quantity is equal to the norm of A, which is the length of A, times the cosine of theta. Just look at the triangle trig here, okay? You take this guy here, <coughs> and, you, and you multiply it by cosine of theta. That's going to chop him down, and that's going to give you this length right here. That is what this quantity equals, okay? And if I take this quantity, and I multiply it by the length of vector b, that is what the dot product is, okay? So what you're really doing when you do a dot product, when you take a and you dot it into b, is you're taking the vectors and you're multiplying the lengths together, but you're only multiplying the length of a that falls in the b direction. So you only care about the portion of this vector a that actually falls upon b, okay? That's what the dot product is, okay? And so mathematically, in promise, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this you know, home for you here. You just have to bear with me a little bit. So if I were to rewrite the dot product, a dot b, okay, it would be what we would say a in b's direction. I'm taking the norm of it, so that's the length of a in b's direction. That's what I'm doing here, times the length of b. So I'm taking the length of a in b's direction times the length of b. That's what I'm trying to do here. So it's a number that you get back. It's not a, uh, it's not a vector. And we'll see that here in a little bit here. Okay, so what we have here is we have A in B's direction, and we're taking the length of that guy, and we're multiplying by the length of B, okay? So we've already kind of hinted to this before, but if I'm going to do that, it's going to be the length of A times the cosine of theta times the length of B, okay? And you commonly see that written as the length of A times the length of B all vectors, by the way, I'm dropping my vector symbols, I'm not, tr not trying to do that, <clears throat> times the cosine of the, the angle between them. So what I'm getting at here is a lot of times in your physics books, and definitely in your calculus book, you'll see the vector uh, dot product written like this. The, the length of A times the length of B times cosine of theta. Now why am I telling you this? This representation of the dot product is going to give you a number because the norm of A is a number and the norm of B is a number and the cosine of the angle is a number. So when you multiply them all together, you get a number. Okay? This is what you use if you know the length of A, the length of B, and the angle between them. You use this form to give you the dot product. But what if I don't know the angle between them? What if all I know are the components of A and the components of B? Well then this thing, which I haven't proved anything to you yet that this is right, but it is right, this is the dot product in a different form, but it is the same dot product. When you multiply the components and add them together, you're getting the exact same number back as if you had calculated the length of A and the length of B and the angle between them and multiplied uh, together. Okay, so that's, that's what you're doing here. Now let me give you a little prelude and stop here a little bit, give you a little prelude and, and tell you why we're doing this stuff and then we'll continue working some problems, okay? Remember back from your physics, which most of you have probably taken, and if you haven't, you'll get a little physics lecture right here, okay? When you calculate the work done on a object that you push across the room, if you push an object across the room, it goes a certain distance. You push a crate down the road and it goes a distance D, right? And I'm pushing on that crate, and let's say I'm not pushing right behind the crate, let's say I'm pushing down on the crate, okay? I'm pushing, you know, here's the crate, and I'm actually angling my force down into the ground. Now, of course, if I push down, you know, a portion of this force is going to scoot it along the ground, but a portion of the force is going to be angled down, okay? The work that you do on that, uh, on that box is force dotted with distance, okay? It's the force that dotted with the distance that you travel. So in other words, the total force that you apply to the box doesn't matter. It only matters how much force you apply uh, in the direction that the thing moves. That's what, that's what matters when you calculate work. It doesn't matter if I push down with 100,000 newtons of force angled very steeply down. The only number I care about when I'm calculating the work is the component of the work pushing it that way. So in order to calculate that, I do force dotted with distance. And look at my definition here, my, my, uh, my poor man's definition. A in B's direction times B, okay? So when I'm pushing down, I'm calculating the force, if I'm going to use a dot product, I'm calculating the force in the direction of motion. And that's the force that I multiply by. And the way I do that is I take that vector, I multiply by cosine theta, I take the length of the vector, multiply by cosine of the angle between the vectors, that chops him down to be in the same direction, and then I just multiply that answer. So A times cosine theta, this quantity is the quantity 
that I'm, I'm, I'm pushing the box in this direction and I multiply that by the vector b, which in this case would be the distance, and that gives me the work. So basically you use the dot product anytime you have two vectors where it really is important that the answer you're trying to get is dependent upon um, one vector acting in the direction of another vector, like a force in a, in a, uh, in a distance. And there's tons of other examples you know, in physics that you could look at when you would use a, a dot product. Notice it gives you a number back. Work is equal to force dotted with distance, okay? And that gives you a number back in joules, a number, not a vector, a number. And that's why, uh, that's why it does that, because you're interested in, in the, the work done in that direction, okay? So, the main thing I want you to pull out of this, and we're going to do a lot more work here with it, there's two different ways to write the dot product. Magnitude of A times magnitude of B times cosine theta. You know how to calculate the mag A. You know how to calculate the uh, magnitude of B or the norm. You know how to calculate, uh, the, if you're given the, the theta, you know how to calculate the cosine, so you can calculate A dot B. If you're given it in component form, you can certainly multiply components. That, that you can do easy, and you can add them together, so you know how to calculate the dot product. Now, 